Thank you. I'm sorry I'm late, and I'm sorry I've missed uh, the rest of the day for two reasons. One, because I would have liked to have heard it, and the second, because I don't quite know how what I'm going to say fits in with it. Um, but we'll, we'll go ahead anyway. So this is a picture of myself um, on my first day at school. And a couple of uh, years later, I said to my teacher that my father was an alcoholic. And uh, he said, I don't think so. And that he was probably guided by the fact that my father was a well-known public accountant in town. He was on the town council and treasurer of the local church that we regularly attended. But of course, I was of the age where I found that quite disturbing, that why would you not believe me? I know my father is an alcoholic. So I said, he goes to all the meetings. So I went home, and I obviously, I don't remember the details of this, but I was obviously quite upset. I told them I, you were an alcoholic, and they didn't believe me. Uh, <laughs> but it turned out uh, that he was on the licensing trust or the liquor advisory council or something, and that was why he was going uh, to the meetings. And in fact, uh, my, the irony was, and uh, many people knew it, my parents didn't drink at all. Uh, <laughs> and I was in a alcohol free house when I grew up. However, some parents have a significant problem with alcohol and that's what uh, has been discussed and this affects their children. The question I want to ask is why? Why are the parents drinking? Could it be because of their own childhood and the exposure to adverse circumstances in that childhood? In childhood, um, we unfortunately have children who experience the four main types of child abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, the most common of which is exposure to interparental violence, but also exposure to parents who uh, are drug and alcohol addicted um, and neglect. And we're lucky that in New Zealand we have some good data on this. So data from the Christchurch Longitudinal Study, um, where they asked at the age of 18, uh, young people whether they'd been exposed to physical punishment prior to the age of 16, uh, they said that over 10% reported yes to regular or severe or harsh physical punishment. And when they looked at their alcohol abuse and dependency at 18 years, you can see that there's a bit of a dose response and certainly um, if you had uh, experienced the most severe forms, um, you had an increased risk of alcohol um, or drug dependence alcohol but not drug dependence. They also asked about exposure to child sexual abuse and here again we see a dose dependent effect that if you were exposed to um, non-contact non abuse or contact abuse or attempted intercourse, um, increasing severity of exposure to abuse increased your risk of being alcohol dependent at the age of 18 years. They also asked about exposure to interpartner violence, uh, violence between the caregivers in the house, uh, and actually 38 to 39%, depending uh, on whether you look at uh, father being violent or mother being violent, report exposure to all types of violence. This includes verbal violence and physical violence before the age of 16. And again, you see a bit of a a dose response to the severity of violence and risk of alcohol abuse and dependence at the age of 18. And that is significant for extent of violence by mother. So if your mother was uh, the main protagonist in the violence, uh, you were significantly, had a significant increased risk of alcohol dependence by age 18. When you look at um, data about socioeconomic status and alcohol and drug dependence, this now from the Dunedin Multidisciplinary Longitudinal Study, at 26 years, um, if you had low uh, socioeconomic status as a child and adult, 21% were alcohol dependent. And there was some dose response, but it wasn't significant at that time point. But by 32 two years, 14 0.4% of the high group from this longitudinal, the whole group from the longitudinal study were alcohol or drug dependent, and those who were of lower socioeconomic status had, were twice as likely to be in that state. And they found that family liability to poor health, childhood or adolescent characteristics, uh, such as low IQ, childhood maltreatment, and adult um, low socioeconomic 
status contributed to 55% of the excess risk of being alcohol or drug dependent at 32 years of age. We've recently had the Green Paper, which was headed up, Every Child Thrives, Belongs, Achieves. And the Green Paper told us that at any point in time, approximately 15% of children can be considered vulnerable in New Zealand. So who are these 15% of vulnerable children? Are they the 17% of girls who've experienced sexual abuse, according to the Christchurch Longitudinal Study? Are they around the 20% of children who live in poverty, um, according to the Green Paper? Are they those 38 to 39% of children that witness interparental violence, um, according to the Christchurch Longitudinal Study? Um, or are they the 20% of parents and their children who have mental health issues, according to the Green Paper itself? How would an action plan for our most vulnerable 15% of children help all these groups, which seem to me, I mean, I'm not that good at maths, but they all seem to be more than 15% to me. So how do we work out who are the 15% more vulnerable children are pop, uh, in New Zealand, who they are, and is this a stable population? Of course, most of us who work in the areas that deal with these children know they're not a stable population. Your risk of being vulnerable changes uh, to different time, with different time points in your life. So how do I think we should de decrease the adverse effects of alcohol on children in our society? My answer is that we should op optimise the childhood experience for all our children and we should break the cycle of disadvantage. We can't afford not to do that um, because uh, I, th I don't think a lot of the laws are going to make much difference if we are producing a group of adults who've had disadvantaged childhoods that have led them to be alcohol dependent. So I feel we need to be very clear about what we want for our children. Do we want the little person, my niece on the left, looking excited about seeing Auntie Dawn and rushing to the camera? Uh, children who are being nurtured um, are happy in their environment. Or do we want my little patient on the right who is desperate for love uh, that he wants to hug the paediatrician and is reaching out his arms for the child protection coordinator. We are supposed to be the grown-ups in the room, so it's up to us to sort it out. Thank you.